वेलकम बैक एवरी वन इन लास्ट क्लास वी स्टार्टेड फ्री वाइब्रेशन ऑफ अ सिंगल डिग्री ऑफ फ्रीडम सिस्टम इन टूडेज क्लास वी आर गोइंग टू स्टडी हाउ टू ऑप्टेन रिस्पॉन्स और द फ्री वाइब्रेशन रिस्पॉन्स ऑफ अ डैम्प सिस्टम एज यू नो इन रियालिटी मोस्ट ऑफ द स्ट्रक्चर वुड हैव सम अमाउंट ऑफ डैम्पिंग एंड इन सम केसेस वी कैन इग्नोर इट इफ द इफेक्ट ऑफ डैम्पिंग इज नॉट मच but realistically damping need to be considered in the response and we are going to see if we have a damped system then how do we obtain the expression for the displacement and the amplification factors related to displacement okay all right so let us get started what we are going to uh, study today's class last class we saw that uh, what is the equation of uh, motion and what is how we uh, saw how to solve the equation of motion for a undamped free vibration right so we said that the equation of motion for undamped free vibration is nothing but this and then we saw that the response of this okay can be represented in terms of initial conditions as u0 cos omega nt s u dot 0 sin omega nt all right and uh, we said that uh, omega n is basically the uh, natural uh, circular frequency of the system right and we try to plot uh, the ut and uh, and then we try to understand discuss what is the physical uh, meaning of each of these parameters now in this class today what we are going to focus on is damped free vibration so it's still a free vibration so the external force is still be zero however for this case there would now be a non zero value of damping okay so we are going to consider damped free vibration okay now for damped free vibration we are going to consider a specific type of damping that i have previously stated it is viscously damped system okay so for viscously damped system as i have previously stated the damping force can be represented as a linear function of velocity okay so that my equation of motion that i need to solve it becomes mu double dot plus cu plus ku that should be equal to zero right so now today we are going to solve this equation that we have here and we are going to follow the same procedure so again it is a second order okay linear homogeneous differential equation okay and the solution would take the same form as the last class so i can represent my solution ut as an exponential function e to the power lambda t all right so once i make that substitution back to this uh, equation of motion for a uh, uh, damped free vibration okay i will get as lambda square m or let me just write it like this m lambda square plus c lambda plus k should be equal to 0 okay now e to the power lambda cannot be equal to 0 okay that does not give me any feasible solution so i am going to equate this expression here equal to 0 and that is a quadratic equation okay and uh, from your uh, quadrat like you know from your previous knowledge the uh, solution to this equation can be written as lambda equal to minus c plus minus c square minus 4 km divided by 2 m here okay so denominator is 2 m uh, if you have forgotten basically i am trying to write the solution of the quadratic equation this as x equal to minus b plus minus b square minus 4ac divided by 2a okay so i'm just correspondingly i've got this uh, Uh, expression for the roots uh, of this different uh, roots of this quadratic equation 
Okay, I can further write this equation as minus c by 2m plus minus and then I'll take that 2m inside the square root sign so that it becomes 4m square. Okay, or I can further write it as this minus k by m. Okay, so I've got two, root, two roots for the lambda corresponding to the positive and negative sign. Okay, now if you notice here carefully, uh, I have a term inside the root here. Okay, now this term could be positive or this term could be negative and that will determine actually what or what kind of motion resulting motion the system would have okay so let us consider the first case in which we say that or we consider that uh, the term uh, under uh, uh, within that square root sign is actually greater than zero so what i'm saying here this term here is actually greater than zero okay that would mean lambda has or i can write my lambda one as this is positive so my lambda 1 and lambda 2 would be real i'll get two real uh, roots okay so the first would be this and lambda 2 would be again uh, minus c by 2m however i have a negative sign here okay, okay now if you look at carefully both these lambda 2 lambda 1 and lambda 2 are negative uh, would be negative uh, values because if you look at it here i have minus c by 2m and i have under whatever the term that i have under uh, square root is less than c by 2m okay because remember i have c by 2m here but then i have another term k by 1 which is actually subtracting from it so the positive term here is actually less than here so this would again be a negative number here and this would of course be negative because there is a negative sign here okay so let us say that my two roots are actually minus k1 and minus k2 where k1 and k2 are uh, like you know positive uh, numbers okay so uh, the solution as i said for this type of equation is written as a linear combination of uh, both roots so i can write it as a e to the power lambda 1t plus b e to the power lambda 2t all right and uh, for this particular uh, case here i can write it as a e to the power minus k 1t plus b e to the power minus k 2t okay and if you look at this function both e to the power minus k 1t and e to the power minus k 2t are exponentially decreasing function so if i write it here or if i try to plot this function here i have u of t and then i have t the function would look like something like this okay all right and like you know of course depending upon the value of k1 and k2 if k1 and k2 are very large it would decay very fast if that they, they are not very large it would decay much slower okay so the rate of decay, decay actually depends on the value of k1 and k2 okay however one thing to notice here is that now my undamped uh, or my damped system here okay when this condition is there when under uh, the term under uh, the square root is actually greater than zero i get two real positive uh, to, uh, basically two real uh, negative roots okay I do not see any vibration. So, do you see any oscillation here? Okay. If you plot u of t versus t, you see that it is just a monotonically decreasing function that goes to zero at very large value of t. <coughs> However, there is no oscillation about the equilibrium position. Okay. Which, let us say, in this case, was u equal to zero. Okay. Uh, uh, if it had like you know oscillation, it would be something like this. Okay. So, for this condition, I do not see any oscillation okay so let us check the other condition okay so in other condition i'm assuming my this quantity here is actually less than equal to zero all right so if it is less than equal to zero i can write my lambda as okay minus c by 2m 
and then because this is less than or equal to 0 I'll take minus negative or minus 1 outside the square root so that it becomes i okay and inside term uh, the terms inside the square roots are a by f minus c by 2m square okay so once I take minus 1 out and I get i now I know that this is positive okay and let us uh, you know represent it with another uh, constant saying this is minus c by 2m this is plus minus i omega d okay we will see the physical significance of omega d but let us for the uh, right now for the time being assume that this quantity here is represented by another constant omega d where omega d is a positive quantity okay a real quantity now using this now I can write my solution as for the ut okay remember that it corresponds to lambda 1 and lambda 2 corresponding to the positive negative sign so I can write e to the power, minus, uh, e to the power lambda 1 to lambda 1 t and then p e to the power lambda 2 t okay if I substitute it here I would get e a e to the power minus c by 2 m plus i omega d t and then plus b e to the power minus c by 2 m minus okay omega d t okay I can take e to the power minus c by 2 m t term out okay so that I get this one as okay and inside I am remaining with e to, e to the power i omega dt plus b e to the power minus i omega dt and if you remember for, from your undamped free vibration okay when we try to derive the solution for that I know that I can write this term e to the power i x as sin x or uh, cos x plus i sin x e to the power minus uh, i x equal to cos x minus i sin x and then I can like you know uh, substitute this value arrange this term this would basically uh, it would give me something like this okay let us see another constant cos omega dt plus d sin omega d of t all right now I know that what is the plot of this function and I know that this is an exponential decreasing function okay so if I let us try to plot this function for the second case I know that this function looks like something like this from my uh, from the solution of the free vibration it looks like something like this however it is multiplied with another term which is an exponential decreasing term all right so uh, it is you know I mean it would be something like let us say uh, like this okay so when you multiply it the resultant function or the ut would look like something like this okay a function which is actually decreasing in the amplitude all right but it's still sinusoidal or still harmonic I should not say sinusoidal but it's still harmonic okay. so i can plot it something like this Okay, so the amplitude is decreasing okay and this is my u of t and this is actually t on the horizontal axis all right so this is the plot of this function now compare this to the function i had here i did not have any kind of oscillation here however in this case i get an oscillation because of this term the sign and the cos term that i have here okay so for this condition when this is satisfied I get an oscillation right and I can represent my function or the response the displacement response as this where the amplitude is actually decreasing with time which is due to the damping of the system all right so for a damped system the amplitude is not constant okay and this here the envelope curve this can be represented as e to the power minus c 2m by t term. Okay, so it is decreasing at this rate. All right. So what I found out that 
the term that I have here c by 2m minus k by m okay when it is greater than 0 I get no oscillation so the if you give initial displacement or initial condition it would simply come back to its original position after a certain time okay however if this is a smaller than 0 then I get oscillatory motion okay now what would happen if this is equal to 0 well if this is equal to 0 I would again get two negative roots here because this term would be 0 now so the solution would still be similar to what I have here so again no oscillation okay because there would be any complex term so there won't be any sign and the cos term okay so it won't have any kind of oscillation okay so I should say now I can what I can do if it's greater than all equal to 0 there would be no oscillation so it would need to be strictly less than 0 or to have it an oscillatory motion okay now for this case what I'm going to do equate this term equal to 0 okay that the C that represent this condition is actually the damping coefficient right at which there is a transition from oscillatory motion to non oscillatory motion and this C is actually called C critical okay so at this critical value of damping what you will see the transition from an oscillatory to non oscillatory motion okay and I need to find out that value of uh, damping uh, coefficient okay so I'm going to equate it to 0 okay so that gives me the value of C critical as 2m times a by m okay and uh, which I can uh, further write it as 2m omega n okay remember that there is a square root term uh, here so I can further write it as 2m omega n so the critical damping coefficient can be written as 2m omega n now in reality the actual damping constant can be smaller than this or it can be greater than c critical right so I define the ratio zeta which is the actual damping in the system divided by the critical damping coefficient okay so the ratio of c by c critical is defined as zeta which is called the damping ratio or at many places you will also see that being referred as you know damping as a value of the critical okay so as you can see in terms of c critical or zeta what did we deduced uh, what did we deduce here we said that if c is less than c critical or zeta is or let us uh, first say uh, yeah let us just say that if this is less than equal to 1 I would have oscillation okay and this is called under damped system okay so I will have an under damped system here when c is equal to c critical or the damping ratio is equal to 1 okay I would not have any oscillation so no oscillation it is called critically damped system all right it's called critically damped system and when c is greater than c critical or zeta is greater than 1 I would again have no oscillation and this is called over damped system okay and you know if I try to plot the variation 
of ut for these three type of systems okay so now i am plotting ut but now i am dividing or like you know plotting it as a ratio of the initial displacement that is given to it okay and this is t as a ratio of the time period of the system okay so what i would see for each of these let me just draw it uh, okay okay so as we discussed this is my underdamped system which provide me which provides me the oscillatory motion so underdamped zeta is smaller than 1 this is an overdamped system okay so this is an overdamped system so zeta is greater than or equal to 1 and this is again a critically damped system okay so this is a critically damped system with zeta is equal to 1 all right so this is the only three situation in terms of the resulting motion of a damped free vibration that are possible okay so it could so if you have a damped free vibration okay it would either be if it's an over damped system or if it's a critically damped system there won't be any oscillation if you provide it initial displacement it would just come back to rest okay from an initial position uh, from the initial displacement however if it's an under damped system okay then it would oscillate and then uh, slowly or gradually it would the amplitude would decrease and then come down to zero and at the rate the rate at which the amplitude actually decreases depends on the value of zeta or the damping ratio okay so i hope that is clear to you now in reality most of the structure okay so the systems that are relevant to structural engineers like uh, or the structures that are relevant to structural engineers like bridges buildings you know uh, most of the systems are actually under damped system okay so let us say bridges buildings okay other type of structure like uh, chimneys dams etc most of these structure have value of zeta which is actually less than 0.1 or 10 percent okay and those system can be categorized as under damped system and that would be the focus of study okay on this chapter that we are we would be primarily dealing with under damped system okay uh, but you could i mean you know in many cases you can see the example an over damped system so where an over damped system would be useful if you think about it any system that you don't want to vibrate but you still want it to be flexible okay so you want it to be flexible okay however you don't want it to vibrate so it would have stiffness but it should not vibrate after you give its initial displacement so one of the example would be a retracting door mechanism so i don't know whether you have observed in many places in the classrooms or halls you know you have actually a piston kind of uh, thing that is connected at the top of the door okay which when you push the door it allows basically the door not to vibrate a lot because there are a lot of people coming like you know uh, following you so uh, to make it safer what do they have i mean that is one of the purpose to make it safer for uh, other people coming from behind you or the other purpose is also to bring it back slowly to its uh, original position so that piston actually provides so much of damping that the system actually work as an over damped system because we don't want it to vibrate back and forth you know uh, once you push it you want it to slowly come down to the original position okay so an example of over damped system would be retracting door mechanism and you know in similar scenarios wherever you have something that you don't want to vibrate but simply you want it to come back to rest after giving its initial uh, displacement of velocity you want 
or you would ideally like it to be an overdamped system okay so like you know i mean uh, there are there are application of overdamped system especially it would be more relevant to mechanical engineers or aerospace engineers okay but for structural engineer for most cases like building bridges we are mostly focused on under damped system and that that is what we are going to study okay so we are going to study under damped system okay now we had obtained here the solution for look at here the solution for u of t here okay but you can see there are two unknown constant okay so those constant are c and d so again the question becomes how do i find the, these constant and that again i would utilize the initial conditions u0 and u dot of 0 so let me just write ut as u to the power minus c 2m by t okay c cos omega dt plus t sin omega dt so i need to now solve this equation for the initial condition but before that remember i said my omega d i am representing it as this quantity c by 2m square minus so let us go back to the omega d value that we had assigned okay so our omega d is actually not c by 2 but is actually k by m so let me just correct that here okay it is k by m minus c by 2m whole square all right and i know my k by m is nothing but omega n square correct so i can write this as omega n square what else is there and if you remember i wrote that my c by c critical i defined at zeta right and my c critical was 2m omega n so c by 2m i can write it as zeta omega n so this i can again write it as zeta square omega n square okay so i can take the value of omega n outside the square root and i am left with this quantity here all right and this is called the damped frequency of the system and this is different from the natural frequency of the system okay uh, note that i'm omitting the term uh, circular frequency and that uh, you know uh, at many places we'll do that okay we are uh, i'm not going to every time pronounce the whole damn you know the natural uh, basically uh, the natural circular frequency okay so if i say frequency and i refer you just need to understand it like that okay so omega d is related to omega n the damp frequency is related to natural frequency using this damping ratio okay now for the under damped system if zeta is less than 0 0.2 remember zeta square would be 0 0.04 okay omega d is approximately equal to omega n all right keep that in mind it is approximately and i can also write remember that using this relationship my t d or the damp time period as t n divided by 1 minus zeta square all right so if you look at these expressions for any non zero value of damping what i will have the frequency is actually decreased but the time period is actually increased so due to damping my frequency is decreased but time period is increased you know and you know by whatever uh, small amount it may be because as i said if zeta is smaller than 0 0.2 it is approximately equal uh, the damped uh, frequency is actually approximately equal to the unda uh, undamped uh, natural frequency okay but uh, theoretically it would actually lengthen the time period or increase the time period but decrease the frequency okay so let us now plot the 
damped response versus undamped response okay and that we can do after i have solved this equation the equation that i have here for the unknown constant okay so let us do that i have these two unknown constants okay and i am again going to write now know that uh, c by 2m now can be written as zeta omega n so i am going to write ut as e to the power minus zeta omega n t and inside the brackets i will have cos omega dt plus t sin omega dt okay remember that the damped uh, system is actually uh, vibrating with omega dt this frequency because sin and terms are sin and cos terms uh, have omega d uh, frequency so it is actually vibrating with omega d not the omega n however the term here outside the exponential term it is omega n you know so uh, many times students while writing the equation get confused okay that's why i'm doing this derivation so that you don't have to remember anything you can pretty much derive all the equation by yourself if you uh, tend to forget it okay now let us utilize this uh, equation for that first i need to do i need to differentiate this equation once so i will i'm going to use differentiation by parts okay so i'm first going to differentiate the exponential term this term would still be the same And then I am going to differentiate the parts that I have inside the brackets, which would give me minus c omega t. Uh, this would be sine omega dt plus I would have d omega d times cos omega dt. All right. So let us substitute the value, the initial condition. So u0 is equal to 1 times c times 1 plus 0. So from the, this equation gives me the value of c as u of 0. Okay. Now let us take the second equation and substitute the value of t is equal to 0. I get that as minus zeta omega n. All right. And then I will have inside the brackets c plus 0 plus 1 times again I have 0 plus d omega d. Okay, so from this equation and substituting the value of c as u of 0, I will get uh, the value of uh, d as u dot. 0 plus zeta omega n u of 0 divided by omega t. So now I obtain both constant. So finally, the expression for the displacement response of a of the for the damped free vibration can be written as this exponential term here. Okay, times u 0 cos omega dt plus u dot 0 plus zeta omega n u of 0 okay, sine omega of dt. So this is the expression for displacement response of a damped free vibration. Okay and I mean uh, you know you can look at uh, look at from here that if zeta is equal to 0 so if you substitute the value of zeta equal to 0 this system actually transforms to free uh, undamped free vibration right because this term would become equal to 1 and then the second term would be equal to 0 and omega d would be basically omega n because zeta is 0 okay so that i can just verify from here but you know for a undamped uh, free vibration there is no damping so amplitude is actually constant it is not changing however I have an exponential decreasing term which would be non zero if the value of damping is non zero. Okay, so that amplitude of uh, uh, damped free vibration actually decreasing with the time. All right, so uh, if you plot it, undamped uh, free vibration or damped free vibration, it would look like something like this. Okay, let me just try to plot it here. Okay. 
So let us say this is undamped free vibration. So constant amplitude. All right. Then for the damped free vibration, it would be something like this. So if you see, the amplitude is actually decreasing. Okay, so it is actually decreasing like this. Okay, so this is undamped, and this one is damped. Okay, one thing that you can observe from uh, this plot that uh, the time period Tn, which for undamped, let us say, describe it like this, and for a damped, I will describe it uh, using. Okay, let me just uh, describe it here. These two peaks for the damp system here. Okay, depending upon value of the zeta. You know they might be close or they might be different. Okay, that all depends on the value of zeta. Okay, now comparing the response, we can uh, see that uh, if a system has very high value of zeta or very high damping, the amplitude dec would decrease much faster and it would come to the original position. Okay, much faster. So the time taken to come to uh, the zero position would be much. Uh, smaller okay and uh, if you keep on increasing there it would reach a point where it would become critically damped and it won't vibrate at all okay all right so once you understand this okay you can obtain the response of the system all right you can obtain the response of the system using the expression that we have derived okay so uh, we are going to conclude this class at this point of time. All right. Thank you.